And welcome uh, to Sugar Talk with Dr. K. Jean Lucas from Diabetes and Endocrinology Consultants. Good morning, doctor. How are you? I'm great. All right. What are we talking about today? Autonomic nervous system. All right. And you can ask anybody if they know what that is. (laughs) Uh, Well, last week we were talking about uh, um, uh, pain. We're talking about like peripheral. Peripheral nervous system is what most people know about. The Mm -hmm. sensory fibers where you feel things and... But autonomic means that you don't control it. Your brain controls it. Mm-hmm. You don't think about how to make your heart beat. Like, should my heart beat 40 or 80? You don't control that. You your brain controls breathing. it. You don't think about, well, sometimes you do. Yeah. Like if you're underwater mm-hmm. and scuba diving, you had to think about breathing through your mouth. But this is the uh, automatic part of the brain. The mm-hmm. part that's the lower part of the brain controls this. and. What's interesting is that diabetes can affect even these nerve endings, Mm. uh, which most people don't even think about this. Diabetes can affect any nerve in your body, basically. So one of the ones that people think about the most or have the most problems with is if the nerves to the stomach or the intestines are affected by diabetes. So if if diabetes affects those nerves, uh, one problem is the stomach doesn't empty because the nerves make the stomach empty. Mm. Okay, so the little nerves that go to your stomach, I mean, you don't tell your stomach to empty. It knows how to do it. Right. But if the nervous system, which is from your brain, is not in control because the nerves have been damaged, then the stomach doesn't know what to do. So is, the stomach that, will is, just sit there. Is that why it doesn't happen sometimes when people are on chronic pain? They're taking uh, medicines and... Uh... And they, they have issues with that? Yeah, the um, pain medicine, narcotic pain medicine, also slows the stomach down. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it sort of paralyzes the nerves. It's like maybe it paralyzes your brain in some ways. Uh, but it, does affect, it doesn't affect the individual nerves, but it affects the muscles. So what is it about, now kind of recap from last week, what is it about diabetes that, that causes nerve effect? I mean, we talk about the blood system, about sugar sticking to stuff. but It sticks is, to the nerve endings. Hmm. So it's sugar-coated nerve endings. The sugar-coated nerve endings don't know what to do. They get confused. Um, so we don't want them to stick. We don't want anything to stick to the nerve endings. Right. It's better to keep them from sticking than try to fix them after they're stuck. Mm-hmm. Because once they're stuck, I mean, sometimes the sugar comes off and the nerves get better. Usually if you still have some sensation, like we talked about last week with the feet, if you still have some sensation, there's still nerves there that are functioning, but they're not functioning correctly. The same way with the stomach. As long as your diabetes is better controlled, a lot of times the stomach gets better. So it's called gastroparesis, which means a paralyzed stomach. Um, And what happens is when you eat, the food just stays in there and you feel bloated or nauseated after eating, feel full, which uh, some people feel full anyway because they eat too much, but I'm talking about feeling full after small amounts of food. And so it takes a while for the food to go through. Sometimes mm-hmm. it takes a whole day for the food that you've eaten at breakfast to go through. So your blood sugar is sort of off the wall because you don't know when you're absorbing the food and when your sugar is ah. going up. Okay. It affects other medications. If you have gastroparesis, uh, which some people know they have it and some people don't, um, it can make you throw up. You throw up old food, food from previous meals. Um, so that's a clue that there's something wrong with your stomach mm-hmm. not emptying because the stomach normally empties within four to six hours totally from the previous meal so that by the next meal it's ready to go. In this case you don't feel hungry all day uh, because you still got that food in there and if you get real nauseated and throw up and you throw up old food then that means your stomach's not working right and it makes a difference with pills because if you put pills in your stomach you're depending on them a lot of times to be absorbed further downstream, uh, and they won't. They'll just sit in your stomach and not work. People feel real bad about picking up that big muffin right now in the, in the service line and <laughs> hearing about these things. It's not really that appetizing as the subject well, at the moment. Well, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Probably yeah, stop them from doing that. Maybe that's a good thing. So if you have gastroparesis, some, some symptoms um, are not related to medications you're taking. They're related to the diabetes affecting the stomach. So mm-hmm. it's... Uh, most people don't realize it. And that's the autonomic nervous system. That's the nervous system that's controlling your stomach. The same way with your intestines or your colon, people with diabetes get more constipation, uh, less often diarrhea from the nerves being damaged. Um, So that's a pretty common problem that constipation is. And that can be treated with medicine for constipation. The gastroparesis is harder to treat because you need a medicine that helps the stomach empty and that's hard to do. There's 
metoclopramide, um, which causes some side effects and has been on lawyer ads on TV. So, um, but we like that one. That one's the best one. If you have more liquid medicine or patch patches on your skin medicine, anything that you can avoid having the stomach absorb. Mm -hmm. So if you have gastroparesis, you want to do that. Try to do more liquid medicine, or you may even need to have a liquid meal in between solid meals to allow the solid meal to go through. So there's a lot of kind of strategies. There's even a stomach pacemaker really? uh, that they're doing at Bowman Gray and some other places mm -hmm. for to help the stomach. Um, now, I would imagine people who feel these symptoms, though, may feel like they need to, they could take something over the counter. Yeah, and sometimes it helps because uh, if you've got a lot of food in there, you tend to stir up a lot of acid and you have mm -hmm. more reflux. Um, but if you have those symptoms, there's a simple study that you uh, eat a radioactive egg and, and they measure the counts on the egg before and after 90 minutes. And there's uh, normals for that. Over 50% is supposed to be gone. Uh, and if you have all of it still in there, then that proves that that's what you have. And mm. I think most, a lot of doctors don't really think about that uh, to do that test, but it's a very helpful test. Sometimes when you do have a upper endoscopy or they look down in your stomach with a light, then they can um, see old food in there and they say, you're supposed to be fasting, you know, mm -hmm. and you were. And you right. were fasting for, you know, 12 hours or whatever and there's still food in there. So sometimes they can tell just from looking down there, but it causes a lot of problems with the stomach, uh, indigestion problems too. So taking an antacid type medicine uh, sometimes helps some of the symptoms. But really what you want to do is try to get your blood sugar better controlled because a lot of these people have poorly controlled blood sugar. And part of the problem is if you don't know when you're going to absorb your food, you don't know when to treat it. Um, and they have tendency to have either high sugars all the time or low sugars all the time or just erratic blood sugars. Well, it sounds like that kind of you get into a cycle there and that you, if you don't know when your blood sugars are going to spike and when you take that medicine and then it gets worse. And yeah, so. especially people on insulin. So mm -hmm. it's very difficult because you'll take the insulin expecting the food to absorb, you know, pretty quick. And then it doesn't absorb till you know, six hours later, the insulin's already gone. And so you had low sugar right after you ate and then a high sugar later. Um, so that gives us some clue if it's very erratic blood sugars for no reason that we could do it. Uh, we do have a clinical research study with gastroparesis with a new medicine that's an injection. So you bypass the stomach, you don't take an oral medicine, uh, and that seems to be helping. Uh, that's not approved yet, but if you do have it, they're looking for people that are throwing up though. Yeah. <laughs> like once a week. Uh, okay. So All that's right. a hard to study to recruit for people yes. throwing up. But <laughs> it would be hard to recruit if for. you tend to throw up and you have diabetes mm -hmm. uh, and maybe you've had the diagnosis of gastroparesis, maybe you haven't, then um, they're looking mm -hmm. looking for people like that so that they can show a definite improvement um, in their symptoms. That's why they want more severe symptoms, I think. Okay. All right. Well, I have more to come in just a moment on Sugar Talk with Dr. K. Jean Lucas. And uh, we're talking about uh, what is it now? Autonomic nerve system? Autonomic, neuro uh, yeah, nervous system. Right. And how you can have autonomic neuropathy from diabetes. Okay. We have a caller standing by. Uh, Archie from Jacksonville wants to ask a question. Hi, Archie. How are you? Well, you have to give blood to it, and uh, you don't prick your finger, but you prick your arm, or you prick your thumb. So that's the sneaky part of that commercial. Yeah. But I like the talking meters because they say, you were a bad boy, you ate too much. <laughs> Put down that donut. Step away from the donut now. All these people, Yeah, there's not a meter that you don't prick your finger. You have to get a uh, drop of blood. So usually you can prick your arm other places. And that's how they get around it. They just say you don't prick your finger and everybody's all excited about that. But when you have to prick, you know, the base of your thumb or your forearm, it takes longer to get blood out. So fingers are the best place to prick. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. And, and is that uh, universal? It's the best place? Uh, what, well, it has more blood, blood right flow, yeah. yeah. Um, 
but some, but you should probably prick the side of your finger because that's where the little um, blood vessel goes. Oh, it's on the that. side. The, mm -hmm. the nerve endings are on the tip. Mm -hmm. So you really would rather, it's more painful at the tip. But if you do the side where the blood vessel is, then that helps. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't hurt as much. Okay. Uh, now you had mentioned about autonomic nerve system, and we may cover this later as well. But uh, are there others besides the stomach? That you could well, if you think about all the organs in your body, mm -hmm. uh, it can affect all the organs. Mm -hmm. So bladder can be affected, so the bladder doesn't empty properly. And if a, if the urine stays in there with a lot of sugar in it, you can get bacterial infections, urinary tract infections, kidney infections. Um, it can affect sexual function in men that they can't get an erection. So that's um, of concern and. The other thing with diabetes, though, is if you have erectile dysfunction, you want to make sure your testosterone level, you know, is normal because that's pretty common with people with diabetes also. Again, all of, all of those things they say in the 45 seconds of the ad <laughs> <laughs> and 15 seconds devoted to the product. Right. Uh, so just remember that. Uh, if you want to find out more about, uh, about your own diabetes and your care as well, too, call on the folks at Diabetes Endocrinology Consultants. The best place to go is go online to beachdoctor.com. That's beachdoctor.com.